Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a 12 volt battery from Sycon. So let's open it up and see what we got. All right, and when you first open it, you'll see that there is a user's manual right on top, which is always nice to see. We got a thin piece of styrofoam and then, and there's the battery. And also in the bag is your post bolts and your post bolt covers. All right, and what we're looking at is the Sycon 12.8 volt, which is your 12 volt battery, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. Um, it says that it is uh, the classic version, so that just means that it's a group 31 or basically a full size. It's basically like a, a lead acid replacement. The big difference between this and a lead acid battery is first the weight. I mean, this battery only weighs probably 25 pounds. We'll find that out in a second. And secondly, you can drop this down to zero when it comes to the amount of percent of energy and it won't really hurt the battery much at all. If you do that with your lead acid, it will really damage the battery if you've kept it there for even a couple days. Um, so this, you can use the full capacity. You can charge it from zero to 100% and you can do that thousands of times before you start to see a degradation less than 80%. All right, so let's go ahead and take the measurements of this battery. This battery is 12 and three quarters inches long. The height, right around eight and five eighths inches. And the depth is right at six and a half inches. And the weight is at 22.5 pounds. So that's even less than I thought it was. This thing is very manageable. Now that it comes with this nylon strap that you can actually, you can easily take them off, which is, which is always nice. So you can kind of put them into place and then take the nylon strap, strap off until you need to move it again. Uh, the design of the battery is, you know, it's all green and white. There's not much going on. There's just the label on front. Very, very basic. And like it says, it's just kind of a classic lead acid replacement. So it's not going to have a lot of bells and whistles. It's just going to be capacity. Okay, a little bit about this battery. Um, like I said before, it's a 100 amp hour, 12 volt battery. So that gives you 1280 watt hours of power. It can be discharged and charged at 100 amps max. And the charging limit is 14.6 volts. And the discharging limit is 10 volts. And also with these batteries, you can connect four in parallel to make a 12 volt, 400 amp hour battery. And then you can actually times that by four if you wanted a 48 volt configuration. So you could actually get 16 of these batteries and make a 48 volt, 400 amp hour battery bank. And what's nice about this manual is that in the manual, it does show you how to wire that all together. It also does say that it has low temperature charging protection, but it's set for negative 15 degrees Celsius, give or take five degrees Celsius. In Fahrenheit, that's actually five degrees Fahrenheit, which is much colder than freezing. I feel like they should have that up a little bit more just to be able to protect those cells a little bit better. But we're gonna be testing that anyway, just to make sure it works. Okay, when you first receive your battery, you should always check it with a multimeter to make sure that the battery is working and that it's at a good voltage, uh, like you know when they shipped it and when they stored it, because they should be really shipping at right around 50%. And I like to say that that's in between 13.1 and 13.2 volts. Um, my last few batteries have been uh, you know 13 or 13.3 volts, which is also acceptable, but I always like to have it in that little sweet range of 13.1 volts to 13.2 volts. So let's check it now. All right, and the voltage is. 13.2 exactly, well, 13.19, but that is right where we want it to be. All right, after you've tested your battery with a multimeter to make sure that it works, go ahead and charge it up all the way to 100%. We're gonna go ahead and do that, and then we're gonna do a capacity test to make sure that we're getting the 100 amp hours that we paid for. Okay, so the capacity test is done on the Sycon 12 volt 100 amp hour classic. And what we got is 105.95 amp hours, and that equates to 1,372 watt hours. Now, look at that flat discharge curve right there. It goes from 13, it goes from 13.25 down to 12.42 before it starts to really drop off. That 
that is perfect. That is exactly what you want in your lithium iron phosphate batteries. All right, I'm gonna charge this thing back up and then we're gonna do a high amperage test to make sure it can sustain 100 amps for at least five minutes. And then we're gonna push it to see when it will shut off. All right, well, I've got the Sycom battery all charged back up and I've got it hooked up to do some high amperage testing. So let me show you what I got going on behind me. Okay, here is our battery. It is connected to a 5,000 watt inverter. Uh, we have a amp clamp right here so we can watch the amperage. And then we also have a, a voltmeter right here so we can watch the voltage of the battery as we do the amperage testing. We have a 500 watt heater and a 200 watt heater. We have an 1100 watt griddler and we have a 1300 watt uh, induction cooktop. So we're going to be running these, I'm going to be uh, running this heater and this induction cooktop at uh, 600 watts and this 200 watt heater for five minutes. Uh, that should give us right around like 115 amps just to make sure that it can pull it off. And then we're going to turn on everything on high to see if the battery shuts off due to high amperage protection. Okay, before we start, I just wanted to let you know that there is one amp coming out of the battery right now just because the inverter is turned on and the battery is sitting at 13.44. So let's go ahead and turn on both these heaters. And we're going to put this induction cooktop on 600 watts, medium high, start. There we go. And our amperage has jumped up to 129, but it will lower back down. Uh, the voltage is at 12.7, which is totally fine. And it should get down to about 115 to 116 amps. Let's go ahead and start our timer. There we go. All right, and we're gonna let this run for about five minutes just to make sure this battery can pull it off with no problems. All right, well, we hit our five minute mark and this battery is pulling this off without, without any problem whatsoever. Uh, we're still pulling right around 100, almost 120 amps now and our voltage is at 12.67. Um, I've been reading through the manual because I wanted to know what the maximum, maximum amperage is before it shuts off and it doesn't say. Uh, it says that the continuous is 100 amps, but it also says that uh, charging over current protection, it just says yes. So um, we're gonna step it up. I feel like 200 amps, we should be getting pretty close to it shutting off. We'll let that run for a couple minutes. If that doesn't shut it off, then we're just gonna boost everything. Hopefully that gives us about 300 amps and we'll let that run for about another minute and if that doesn't work, then I don't think uh, I would trust the overcurrent protection of this battery. So let's go ahead and jump it up to 200 amps. All right, turned on the griddler. And our amperage, oh, our amperage is 245 now. Our voltage of our battery is now 12. It was about 620 when I did that. So we'll let this run until, I don't know, 7.30. Everything about the battery right now is still relatively cool. There's no heat spots, there's no hot spots on it at all that I can feel. And we are pulling 245 amps. So uh, that's kind of concerning. Okay, well it's now seven minutes and 30 seconds. We're still pulling 243 amps. The voltage is at 11.96. And so let's go ahead and cook this. Let's boost this up to 1300 watts, max sear. And now our amperage is 306, 312, 312 amps. Voltage of the battery is 11.63. Uh, it's been, we started about eight minutes. So we'll let this run for about a minute. And it really should shut off. The terminals are starting to get pretty warm. We've got 310 amps going through this. The battery is now at 11.59 volts. And we're at nine minutes. So 
unfortunately I'm gonna stop this test I don't feel like I don't feel like this battery has any kind of over amperage protection uh, maybe it has over temperature protection but again I don't want to test that with this battery so unfortunately the over amperage protection in my view is a fail all right so the next thing we're gonna do with this battery is we're gonna unhook it and we're gonna throw it in my deep freezer for 24 hours to see if it has cold temperature charging protection All right, we have the Sycon 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery fresh out of the freezer. It's been in there for right around 24 hours and it is frozen. Now, um, 24 hours is a perfect amount of time for these to get as cold as they need in order for that low temperature charging protection to trigger. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook it up to this Latime 12 volt charger right here. All right, and what you see is the green light is flashing on the charger, that means it's in standby. Um, if it is uh, solid green, it means that it's fully charged. If it is solid red, it means it's charging. And if it is blinking red, then, then, then there's a fault. Um, what's gonna happen, if this has low temperature charging protection, what will happen is I will connect the charger to the battery and it will click on to charging and it will only do that for about two to three seconds before the BMS shuts off and it will go from a solid red to a solid green because the, the charger thinks that it's full. So let's go ahead and hook it up and see what happens. All right, here we go. All right, it's charging. Perfect. That's exactly what it should do when it has low temperature charging protection. So this Sycon battery, this Classic, does have low charging temperature protection. Okay, well this Sycon 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, um, it, it did pretty well. Um, it didn't pass all my tests, unfortunately. Um, it did pass the capacity test. It gave us over 100 amp hours. Um, it did pass the low temperature charging protection test, which is great. It also passed the, uh, the, the max current for five minutes test. Um, you know, it was able to power you know, 115 amps for five minutes, no problem. So if you're just looking at like just capacity, you know, this, this battery is pretty good. It doesn't have Bluetooth, so it's not a smart battery at all. But um, it is a budget battery, so you know you're just you're basically just getting capacity. So if you have any questions about the Sycon battery, uh, please leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description if you do want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video, and have a great day. Bye bye.